Hey everybody, it's Javad and I'm here with another stream of consciousness vlog update about my project Gintani speakers. It's Sunday and I'm out here in the speaker shop and uh, just kind of tell you guys what I've got going on and I've got uh, some drivers to show you for this project. Normally I start uh, you know, with a vlog about the drivers that I'm using but um, I just didn't have them this time and they just showed up from Sound. And uh, I can open them up here and, and we can talk about them. So <clears throat> here's uh, where things are at with uh, the gin tonnies. So I am doing some veneering, which is, which is rare. I don't usually uh, use veneer, but uh, here we go. These are the bottoms. And so there's a nice solid, solid walnut paper-backed veneer uh, that I just applied. Here are my cut pieces for the rest of it. So these are this piece is for the back, and then these pieces are for the front and sides. So this will wrap around the curved sides of the cabinet and give the nice appearance of uh, one piece of wood. That's the back, and there's the fronts. So you can see those are the drivers, tweeter, mid, woofer, port, bottom. So I just applied... Uh, the veneer to the cabinet using this Titan DX glue. I've used uh, construction adhesive in the past and I've used yellow uh, glue as well, PU glue, and, um, or PVA glue. And uh, since, the, since these cabinets are curved, I, didn't, I don't have a big vacuum bag or anything like that. And, uh, so I got this veneer from veneersupplies.com and this is the glue they recommended. So, you know, I, I read around a little bit and it seems to be well received. So that's, that's what we got going on. So I'm gonna let this set up for a while and then I'll trim it. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna trim the back because supposedly the veneer can expand a little bit with the water-based glue. And uh, so I'll just trim the back so I can apply the back piece and then I'll let those both dry before I trim those. And then, uh, and then I'll do the front and sides in the next day or two. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit more daunting because I got to apply glue to the front here and the sides. And I think I'm going to do it on the ground with like a thin blanket so I can kind of roll the cabinet. Um, the veneer will have no trouble bending around this radius, but, uh, you know, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's a little high stakes, but it's not too bad. I'm not too worried about it. So Got some other stuff here. These are the top panels, in case you saw the last update. So these go on the tops, and uh, they'll go like this. You can see these are all the dowel holes I drilled to secure this piece to the top. Uh, so we got two pieces, one for each cabinet. This is some nice walnut I picked up. It's a really nice, beautiful grain and beautiful colors. Not a lot of figure in it. Um, there was some, but um, no, no, mostly no figure. And there's not a lot of figure in the veneer either, so that's fine. Then I got, uh, these are the, the port provisions I did a post about. So these, these are flanged and I'll eventually glue these into the cabinet, kind of just like you would a, uh, uh, what are those things called? I never, I can never remember the name of those plastic port things, porta ports or porta tubes or I don't know what they're called. Um, so he, here's here's the port tube installed in the receiver groove there. So you can see it creates a, a really nice smooth transition. There's no step or anything like that. And I'll paint the port tube there. And then this is on the other end. I've got this flange here, so there. So on the other end, it would go like this. And there's a quarter inch radius here to smooth out the airflow on the inside of the port. I usually don't do as much on the inside because uh, it's on the inside and I just haven't found the need. Um, typically, something like this will have a dramatic improvement over nothing um, to keep that air flowing smoothly over this lip and not creating turbulence, which is what you, you end up hearing. And then, uh, I haven't posted about these yet, but these will go on the back of the cabinet and these will 
house the, the binding posts, which we'll thread in. And this is a little decorative piece I made. I still need to finish sanding a little bit, but it's solid walnut. Again, there's a flange, it'll glue in. Then I added this um, plywood to the back because these are nice and long and uh, there's plenty of threads there. And um, I think this adds a nice touch. It, it you know, visually plays off the, uh, the port as well. So, you know, little touches like this can really take a, a speaker to the next level and and they're not that much more work, you know, I spent making, you know, I spent an hour making all these little pieces one night um, after dinner before bed. So even if it took you three hours, I think it'd still be worth it. So, um, all right. And uh, let's see. we got some drivers here. So three, this is a three-way. I have three different Satori drivers. Um, a nine and a half inch woofer and a 13 millimeter or five inch mid range and a uh, tweeter. So let's start with the tweeter. This is the TW 29 DN B 8. Yep. So Tweeter, 29 millimeters, dome, neodymium, black, eight ohms. This is a Satori tweeter. All this is Satori stuff is just really beautiful and like a work of art. And I picked up all these drivers from Mattisound, in case you're wondering. Mattisound is the US uh, distributor for all of the Satori and SB acoustics drivers. So this does have a neodymium magnet. It has a tuned chamber. Um, it's a very strong motor. It's a very sensitive tweeter. It's about 96 dB at 2.8 volts. Um, they they uh, claimed that this uh, center plate is isolated from the frame, so it gives some additional resonant isolation from the cabinet, which is a nice little touch. Um, just, you know, there's just a little extra level of detail. So this is very similar to another tweeter I've used, which is uh, a dimple dome uh, ring radiator. But this is the dome version of that. That one is the, that's the TW29R. Um, and this is the D, which, which ring and dome. So yeah, really looking forward to using this tweeter. It's pretty much flat to a thousand hertz. Um, probably end up in the 1500 to 2000 range, I'm sure, but we'll see. That's usually where I end up. Um, of course, I'll validate everything I do with distortion measurements as well. All right. So this is the, this is the uh, MR 13 P-4. This is a four ohm, five inch, mid-range. Now this is different than the MW13, which is more of a woofer. I used the MW13 in my P215 build that I did with the CSS P215 kit. That little five inches, I mean, it's, it's an impressive little driver. It can do bass. Um, it has a lot of excursion. The main difference uh, with this MR driver is that it has a different voice coil. The voice coil is shorter, it has less S X max, and uh, the feel small parameters are different. It's, it's more optimized for mid-range frequencies. It's, it's not gonna do bass. I don't think uh, you would wanna cross this over below 150 hertz, uh, maybe even higher. I'm probably gonna shoot for like the 300 to 400 hertz range, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what the drivers say when uh, when we're, we're doing the crossover measurement with Jeff. But um, yeah, and, and as a reminder, I am doing the crossover on these with Jeff Bagby. All right, let's take a look. This, these, these drivers are just gorgeous. Um, like other high-end drivers on the market, um, the fin finish is impeccable. 
They use all the right materials. This is a neodymium magnet, so it has a lot of motor force. Um, this is um, overhung motor. You can see the voice coil there. If it was underhung, the windings would be down inside um, the magnet gap. And um, kind of going up and down, I can see some copper in there too. So there's, there's, cop there's a copper cap for, for good inductance control. And um, this is gonna be a really low distortion driver um, and has an, a very flat response. Uses Satori's papyrus cone technology. Um, Hey, it's papyrus. It's got real bits of papyrus, so it's gotta be good. Um, so yeah, I'm, you know, th this will be a really nice driver. It pairs really nicely to that tweeter. Uh, sensitivity on this is 91 dB, um, which is nice. Also a four ohm driver. And um, there's, there's gonna be plenty of overlap. You know, th this, this, you could probably cross this over above 3000, 3500 Hertz easily and the tweeter can cross over an octave, you know, below that. So there's gonna be a nice one to two octave overlap uh, for the crossover on this. Uh, makes it real easy and gives you a lot of options to, to pick, you know, the best uh, phase and uh, frequency response characteristics that you're looking for. And you know, when you get, this is not a cheap driver, this is a $130 mid. I think that tweeter is around 130 to 150 dollars as well um you know these aren't cheap drivers but they make a lot of other things easier and they, they ultimately give you the best results uh, possible with the least amount of work you can use a simpler crossover um, the drivers are more forgiving for a lot of different factors so you know you could you can get away with cheaper drivers but if you're just looking for really good parts um, I'd say Satori's one of the best on the market right now as far as the value for what you pay. So, you know, this, this is 130 bucks. It's not cheap, but this, this mid will hold up to just about anything in the world out there at any price. So, all right. And finally, we got the nine and a half inch woofer. Now, this is a very popular driver these days. I see a lot of you guys using it out there. And I haven't had the chance to use it yet, so I'm really looking forward to it. And this thing is a tank. This, this, is, this does have a ceramic magnet, but it's a big one. And it's really heavy. It's got a two inch voice coil. It's also overhung. You can see the, the voice coil there. Um, I'm told there's plenty of copper in this motor. So again, really low distortion really good control of the motor um, a nice thick hard paper cone rubber surround i think x max on this is about six mil but uh, satori rates linear excursion up to eight so this 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 woofer is nine, nine and a half inches in diameter uh, approximately and uh, this is going to put out the same base as you know your average 10 inch woofer um, and again, very low distortion, um, good efficiency. This is 91 dB efficient as well. Um, so yeah, my hope is that I can kind of uh, stitch the mid to the woofer without um, uh, any dampening. And you know, Jeff and I will work on that together and get that figured out. So it's, it's really an honor to work with drivers like this. These are about 200 bucks each, not cheap, but Again, this is pretty much state of the art um, out there at any price. Um, and this isn't, you know, some 20 year old $200 driver. This is, this is a new, new design. It hasn't been on the market for very long. And um, this, is, uh, this is state of the art. So anyways, really cool drivers. I wish I, I could find something bad to say about them. So I sound more uh, unbiased, but uh, I'm biased. This is, Satori stuff's nice. SB Acoustic stuff's really nice. Um, this isn't a commercial. I'm doing this for fun, but uh, yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't see a lot wrong um, with these drivers. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, all right. So Gintani Project. 
Stay tuned for more, more veneering, more veneer trimming. It's going to be super exciting. Um, I can't wait. So look for some cool updates uh, in the next week or two, and we should be doing crossover soon after that. I'd say next week sometime. All right, thanks, guys.